It's an icon of Spain, a symbol of the Catholic Church, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it's still unfinished. That's right, today, more than 135 years after the cornerstone of Barcelona's Sagrada Familia was laid, it continues to be surrounded by cranes, it continues to cost the government millions of dollars, and its existence is entirely illegal. Despite its chaotic history and its unfinished facade, the beautiful basilica remains a marvelous example of Gothic architecture, drawing in tens of thousands of tourists every day. So why does it take so long to build? What makes it illegal? And what's the Barcelona government doing about it? Let's find out. But first, let's take a moment to appreciate its true beauty. Be honest, have you ever seen a church, or for that matter, any building quite like it? We certainly haven't. The layout of the world-famous Basilica de la Sagrada Familia features 18 towering columns, each more impressive than the last. Each, as well, holds a special religious significance. As we look at the architectural marvel from above, the central tower, this one, is dedicated, of course, to Jesus Christ, while the neighboring four represent the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. See the tower above the apse? The one with the star? That represents the Virgin Mary. As construction continued into the latter part of the 2010s, the Tower of the Virgin Mary became the first on the property to surpass the coveted height of 100 meters, an achievement that the other central towers reached shortly after, back in 2019. The remaining 12 towers represent the 12 apostles. We won't name them all, but we will tell you that those 12 apostles are spread across three unique facades. In other words, three sides of the glorious structure. You've got this one, the Nativity facade, which represents Jesus' birth. This one, the Passion facade, which represents His suffering. And this one, the Glory facade, which speaks of His resurrection. The Nativity facade faces east. The Passion facade looks out to the west. And the Glory facade, which is still under construction, oversees the south. Once building finally wraps up, the tallest of the newest towers will be 564 feet, or 172 meters high, which will make the striking cathedral officially the tallest religious structure in Europe. Globally, it'll be second behind only Casablanca's Asan II Mosque. But as we know, creating this iconic landmark was far from swift. In fact, it's not even close to being finished. And it's been in construction, get this, since 1882, nearly 140 years ago. 1882 marked the project's inception, back when architect Francisco de Paula del Villar first drew his designs. However, nobody could have anticipated the list of remarkable ongoing events that would continually stall the building's progress. Little could have known that five generations would watch in awe as the structure slowly took form. So here's a brief insight into how it all played out. In 1882, Francisco was approached with this concept. Build a church with neo-Gothic elements, give us Augeval windows, buttresses, flying buttresses, and of course, a pointed bell tower. But Francisco and the church disagreed about the cost of materials, so he decided to walk away from the project entirely. Enter his replacement, Antoni Gaudi, a rising star in Spanish architecture, but more on him later. In 1891, work began on the Basilica's now iconic nativity facade. But because Gaudi was still working on other projects, it was a slow process. Then, in the late summer of 1909, at age 57, Gaudi transitioned exclusively to the Basilica. It took all the way until 1925 for the St. Barnabas Bell Tower to finally be completed. And remember, that was just one tower. Now about that architect, Antoni Gaudi, a man whose name has gone down in the history books. As Spanish civilization crossed from the 19th to 20th century, Gaudi was fast in climbing the ranks and becoming one of Europe's most respected and sought-after architects. After taking the reins from Francisco de Paula del Villar, Gaudi envisioned a new concept, and a daring, extremely ambitious one at that. He envisioned the soaring visual narrative of Jesus' life, but already into his own latter stages of life, Gaudi was well aware that he almost certainly wouldn't be around to witness the Basilica's eventual completion. Despite not being the intended architect, he was clearly the right man for the job. Just take a look at this Gothic design portfolio and you'll see why. He was the brains behind Theresian College Episcopal Palace, and a little later, the now iconic Park Güell. Believe it or not, he also dabbled in bridge work. Check out this unique piece, the bridge over the Torrent de Pomeray. Even in his university days, Gaudi's work drew attention. The cemetery gate, 
the Quasi building, and the fountain in Plaza Catalunya were each outstanding designs in their own right. Yet of course, there's one major question that must be answered. Why did Gaudi's greatest work, the Sagrada Familia, take so long to build? There are a number of reasons, actually. As we drift back to 1909, just as Gaudi had turned his full-time attention to the Basilica, the city of Barcelona descended into chaos. Military clashed with striking workers, and violence erupted. More than 50 religious buildings were torched, yet thankfully, Sagrada Familia was spared. Today, we know the violent time as the Semana Tragica. This, of course, slowed down progress in the early 1900s. But in June of 1926, not long after the first tower was complete, more tragedy struck. Sadly and unexpectedly, Gaudi passed away. As a mark of respect for his work, he was buried in the chapel of Our Lady Mount Carmel in the Sagrada Familia crypt. Interestingly enough, whenever Gaudi himself was asked why the project was taking so long, he'd fondly remark, <clears throat> my client is not in a hurry. The client in question, in his eyes, was God. Despite Dominic Sagrañe's taking over the project, Gaudi's passing, of course, was another major obstacle to the progress of construction. Fast forward to the 1930s, and Spain was now in the midst of a dangerous civil war. In 1936, La Sagrada Familia was vandalized. Anarchists set fire of the structure, and with it, the vital plans, photographs, and plaster models were destroyed, burned. Not until 1939 were those plans and photographs reconstructed. Yet the effects of the Civil War lasted much longer than the war itself. There was very little money to be donated, so the project remained paralyzed all the way until 1952. Money, or in this case, lack thereof, was always an issue. Since the Sagrada Familia is funded solely by donations from the people, financial resources are sporadic, often stagnant. If a private company were responsible, it would be a different story. While it's near impossible to declare how much money the prolonged construction has cost over the century and a half, estimates suggest it's anywhere upwards of 370 million euros, the equivalent of 435 million US dollars. Many suggestions claim its value has soared into the billions Initially, the cash all came from private donors, but these days, visitor entrance fees help with costs and maintenance. It's a cloudy figure, but whichever way you look at it, it's monumental, and it dwarfs that of a number of other world-famous landmarks. The Eiffel Tower came to 1.5 million, and at the time, the Empire State Building cost just under 41 million to build. If we compare that to other churches, the reconstruction of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris cost 118 million euros. What's utterly baffling is that this drawn-out, century-long construction has been entirely illegal. Despite its current status as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, La Sagrada Familia never received an official permit from the local Barcelonian authority to begin construction. When construction started, Started, the land on which the basilica sat wasn't technically part of Barcelona. After countless back and forth and more than 130 years of legal limbo, a punishment of sorts has finally been dealt. Following two years of negotiation, it was recently decided that the Catholic Church and Sagrada Familia must hand over 36 million euros, around 42 million US, which will be spread out over a period of 10 years. Pretty fast compared to the actual construction of the place, if we dare to say. Although technically, that 36 million euro punishment isn't a punishment at all. Nor is it a fine, rather a contribution to the city, with allocated methods of spending. 22 million euro will go toward work on the city's public transport network. 7 million is set aside for improving access to the metro system. 4 million is for redeveloping the tourist line streets around the site. And the remaining 3 million will be reserved for street maintenance and security of the busy area. Barcelona's mayor, Ada Calau, was so shuffed with the deal that he even tweeted in celebration, calling it an historic agreement. But since this is technically an agreement, the church receives something in return, too. In exchange for the money, the local authorities will formalize and regularize the landmark's construction, and they'll also be setting up a commission dedicated to finding solutions to finishing the decades-long project in a timely manner. If we've learned anything, it's to take any finishing date with a grain of salt. However, the church is expected to be finished in 2026, the centennial anniversary of its architect's passing. Regardless of its level of completion, the Catalonian icon will draw in hordes of tourists. That's a given. Paris has the Eiffel Tower, Giza has the pyramids, New York has the Statue of Liberty, and Barcelona has Sagrada Familia. Even while surrounded by cranes, the icon has welcomed over 10,000 daily visitors, making it easily the most visited tourist attraction in the city. With well over 3 million snappy happy tourists wandering through its mesmerizing interior every year, you can too, for just 20 euros.
Without lines and flat surfaces, the interior designs are comprehensive, bold, and incredibly elegant. While most churches are dark in color, this one is not. Gaudi opted for pale colors, which reflect the dancing beauty of light beaming through the stained glass windows. As you can see, no matter which direction you turn, there's always something to marvel at. Amazing, right? On the inside, it's spectacular. On the outside, it's unfinished, yet still spectacular. But how does it compare to some of the most unique and famous religious buildings around the globe? Here's the Halgrimer Church in Reykjavik, the sprawling Milan Cathedral, St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow, and for something a little different, the Cathedral of Brasilia. Which church do you think is most impressive? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the richest, and have a great day. Catch you next time.